This is the All-American Ron Simmons, and you're listening to Casio's Cut. Damn! What's up, Candy Lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing? You're listening to another edition of Casio's Cut. Today, I'm joined by a buddy of mine, Mr. Paul Janeway from St. Paul and the Broken Bowls. What's up, buddy? Uh, nothing much, man. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Wait, I'll, see, I've been I've been analyzing your room on uh, on Instagram because you've been doing some concerts. I, yeah. I I need to know what's going on up at the top. What are all the little colored things? Oh, those I, you know what? Yeah, I'll grab one real quick. Hang on, I know this is terrible for podcasts. No, we're uh, good. Okay, two things I've noticed. One. That room is way bigger than it appears in the background. <laughs> you just kept walking back there. And two, yeah. those things are bigger than I thought. Yeah, this is um, <laughs> a merch item. Yeah, this is no joke. This is a merch item from an artist, uh, an electronic artist named Apex Twin. And those teddy bears are um, part of a music video that he did. Mm-hmm. And so I want to say two years ago, he sold merch for the first time ever. And so I bought everything that they put on sale and it all sold out instantly. Like, like no joke, these things retail, like I, was, I looked them up on eBay. I think they sell for like $200. What? Cheap. Yes. Yes. What? That's what I'm saying. What's his name? Uh, Apex Twin is the stage oh. name his real name is richard d james and so you were just a fan uh, yeah I, lo- I mean i i'm a huge fan of uh of his music and like i said he doesn't put merch on for sale and so i'm a mega fan so i was like i'm going to buy everything and i bought like there's an umbrella up there uh actually what's crazy is he sold um mask like real legit you know mask and i'm on a mask very- Look, Corona mask two years ago, and I'm wearing. I'm that's what I'm wearing throughout this this uh, pandemic. It's been kind of nuts. It's been crazy. So, I I love weird merch. Yeah, you know, I'm still a fan, you know, um, right. of music, and so I always love weird vinyl things, weird music things, uh, weird merch items. So, uh, if there's somebody I like, I'll, I'll you know, I might ask for a little help if i can't find it you know but i try to you know experience getting up at whatever time and you know and and buying it and and feeling lucky or whatever so let's uh clarify for maybe some people who uh, happen to have not heard you guys before saint paul and the broken bones um do you consider yourself um soul music what do you consider you guys i mean it varies i think we it's a soul there's obviously vocally it's a soul it comes from a soulful place um always got good you know groove and uh have a horn section so that kind of lends itself to that style of music that or ska we're not a ska band um so uh i kind of i don't i always say that like genres to me are for record labels and and uh pr people you know and yeah and so we kind of I feel like, you know, we kind of go all over the map, but we're always going to have a good groove and soulful vocals. So, um, yeah, I mean, soul's not bad. You, <laughs> soul's I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. So you're, you're <laughs> I mean, whatever. Uh, so you guys, uh, of course, are from Alabama. As if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the hat you are proudly representing. Oh, yeah. Roll tight all the way. You too. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you guys – officially what formed 2012 2013 so we officially formed in 2012 that's when we started using the name st paul and the broken bones um in birmingham and but it really all started with me and jesse who's the bass player in the band uh we've been really good friends for well over a decade now what like yeah it's been a while um and we just always kind of made music we would either do it in each other's living room um and obviously this is you know it kind of turned into a thing um but yeah it was 2012 yeah we're on our eighth year now um 
do you got do you consider yourself I, I feel like and maybe it's just from when I discovered you or whatever as a as a fan I feel like it moved pretty fast for you guys I, I, it did for me you think so? I mean, to, to be dead honest for me it did um I feel kind of guilty sometimes because you know a lot of the guys in the band some most of them have kind of toiled and toured or you know played every dive bar or whatever they could and I didn't I grew up singing in church um I did some open mics you know that kind of thing for a little bit and um I yeah but I I never had done a proper tour until this band it's not even close uh, but like you know bro who's a guitar player played with Jason Isbell um in the 400 unit and that was I like to say that's before Jason got huge because Jason's huge now and Brown was on the road road with him, for, you know, when he was in a van and they were, I mean, they were playing so much and, you know, kind of earned their stripes, that whole crew kind of earned their stripes that way. And yeah. um, uh, so a lot of the guys, a lot of the guys, but me, no, I personally, no, I, I, I would be lying if I sit here and sat here and said it didn't feel a little, little fast. I mean, is it, is it like about two years and then you guys are making national TV, CBS? Is, is, was that when CBS was? Yeah, I want to say in two. Yeah, we we started in May, July of 2012, and we our first TV performance. Yeah, it was 2014 of February. I want to say. Um, so yeah, it it was uh that's pretty pretty remarkable. Um, for you know we made that we made half the city. We'd only been a band really for about four months when we made half the city. And so, which is just kind of insane. We made that in February 2013 or January 2013. When did you, when did you think, Hey, this is getting kind of bigger than maybe I even thought. <laughs> I mean, I, I know everybody, you know, that starts a band wants it to be successful, but like you said, we're, you know, we're kind of moving fast. When was it like, Hey, this thing's getting real. Honestly, man. Like I, I always say this, our goal, when we first started, we had a little club in Birmingham called bottle tree cafe. Yeah. And it was like a 225 cap room. And we, our goal was like, all right, let's sell that out. If we sold that out, I feel like I'd have done something. And I remember, it's funny, we um, technically were opening up for a band. Um, but the band quickly. Would you like to say who that is? Uh, it's a band called MFA. Like, they're great. I mean, they're okay. we're, we're still buddies. But, like, we opened up for them. And they soon realized that it was not them who sold out the venue. And, uh, so, <laughs> so they, they, uh, they soon realized that they weren't the ones that sold out the venue and, and we sold out, we sold it out that time and then came back again and sold it out, you know, uh, with us headlining. And so I think that's when I knew, okay, this is going to be something a little bit bigger than that, you know, than a 220 cap room in Birmingham. All right. So let's talk about a couple gigs. Everything's moving fast. And, um, so there's a couple of particular things I want to shout out with you. So, um, and these are in no chronological order. Uh, first, we need, uh, for everybody viewing on YouTube, we need to describe this picture. Um, <laughs> which is uh, which is you in an elf outfit. Now, if anybody's ever seen you in person or if, you, if they go check out YouTube right after this, uh, you, you went from suits, then you're going to, uh, some people say capes. I've seen you describe it as a moo before. <laughs> um, but this particular, uh, image I found is you in a full blown elf outfit. What's going on here? <laughs> you weren't ready for that. Uh, I like it. No, that's good. I like that. Nobody, you know, I, I expect nothing less. Um, I, uh, I, <laughs> so, so we did, we did a Christmas song called, it's an old Louis Armstrong song called Zat You Santa Claus. And it's one of those kind of, it's kind of a creepy Christmas song. And then we, we didn't want to do a standard Christmas song, but we were asked to do it. They were releasing, I think it was recently some new Grinch movie. Um, what, they, year is, what year is this probably? This is 2018. Okay. Maybe 2018. Um, and they asked us to do a sound, a song for the Grinch. And we had stayed away from doing Christmas songs and anything. So we wanted to kind of do something 
different. And then <laughs> it was one of those things like ended up not being up on the Grinch soundtrack or, you know, and so Amazon wanted it for like an Amazon Christmas playlist. And I, and so to promote it, we did uh, the late night sh uh, show with Stephen Colbert. And I was like, well, if this is like, we even got like, you see the snow. Yeah. I'm like, that's like soap bubbles. Like we got, we were, we asked for the full, like, let's just go full on uh, Christmas. And, uh, and so the guys got, you know, like tacky Christmas sweaters. And I was like, well, I can't come out there and like the, the robe or whatever. I was like, I got it. So I had two outfits that I bought off of, I think I bought them off of Amazon. It was a buddy, the elf <laughs> and a Santa Claus suit. And, and when I put the buddy, buddy the elf uh, outfit on, my wife started laughing. So I was like, "Well, that has to be the one." And what is funny is our keyboard. Like I didn't really tell the guys, and I. Well, so I, I said, "Guys, I, I got something special for this performance," and um, and so I put it on, and everyone but the keyboard player is laughing. The keyboard player is like, "Oh my God, our career's over! Like he is about to ruin our career." You jumped the shark. <laughs> yeah, we have jumped the shark. This guy's wearing an elf outfit on national <laughs> television. But, you know, at that point, we, I mean, we're very fortunate. We've gotten to do it. You want to do something different. And it, like, it, it fit. It ended up, I, I, it ended up being a lot of fun. What was my favorite, though, is that I'm dressed as Buddy the Elf, like, ridiculous. And Stephen Colbert's, like, going through, shaking hands, and didn't even hesitate. Like, just, like, this was a normal Friday afternoon. There's this dude dressed as the Buddy of the Elf, and, it was just like, man, it was a, it was a unique experience and we had a, had a good time and uh, it ended up not ruining our career. So I'm, I'm happy about that. So is this around Christmas or is this one of those things you record like not at Christmas time? Uh, the we, show was, was actually Christmas. The, Christmas show, the show was around Christmas. Um, the recording obviously had to be done, I think by June because, you know, when they, when they send you these movies, they like send you a clip. And they'll, you know, we kind of let that inspire if that's the way you want to use it. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a unique experience. And then Colbert no sold it. I like it. No, no sold it. Like like I was just I could have been in a business <laughs> outfit, and I was I was like, man, that must be a, an interesting life to just see someone dressed as an elf and be like, oh hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Like, didn't, didn't go like, what the hell are you wearing? I see some. Uh, I see some uh, tacky sweaters back there. We got antlers. Uh, and then is that a festivus for the rest of us shirt? Yeah, yeah, it is. It sure is. There's a sure. uh, there is a there's a menorah up there for our uh, Jewish uh, folks, our crew members, and um, yeah, we we uh, it was fun. It was a fun time. It was. I was just kind of—it's a goofy song in general. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, I—I I don't want I, this. Can't be an overly serious <laughs> performance where you're, you know, um, you know. Oh, absolutely love it. Um, all right, let's talk about. We got we got some more things we need to cover here. Let's talk about. <laughs> that's the last goofy one. The rest of them are. I just want to hear about the. Experience. Oh, that's great. That's great. No, I love it. All right, we got we got this guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. a little Elton John action. Yeah, we um, did that. This is post Grammy party. Uh, Oscar. Oh, post Oscar. Yeah. So uh, uh, talk about how you get involved in this. <laughs> well, it's a it's a it's a interesting uh, story, I guess. Uh, some so we developed a, a a good relationship with Roseanne Cash. Okay. Who's Johnny Cash's daughter, and um. And she, you know, she's also a great, you know, recording artist and, and she is, uh, she, she's, she really is kind of a tastemaker in certain, certain circles, you know? Okay. And, and, um, she saw us in New York and was just, you know, going crazy. And, uh, it's, it's just all sorts of, you know, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever, but, um, she saw us. And then Elton and her are, you know, buddies and she's like, Hey, you need to, listen to this and Elton really fell in love and you know he called me and we talked and and just kind of you know gave advice and you know when he played actually when he played up in Huntsville um at the Von Braun Center uh I, I got to go and it was it was a an amazing experience he was nothing but you know just so kind and, and generous with his time uh it was crazy because 
you know, we had good seats. We had like third row seats. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Great. And his, uh, at about two songs in, his, I guess, person comes over and gets us and was like, hey, y'all got to come, you got to come side stage. And I was like, he's like, he said, what he told me was Elton was f- trying to find out where y'all were and he couldn't see you. So I just thought, you know, we'll just bring you side stage. <laughs> and I was just like, what? How is he talking? What? It was, uh, it was pretty amazing. And um, anyway, so all through these circumstances and crazy. And so he, every year, hosts a, for his AIDS uh, nonprofit or a charity, he hosts a post Oscar party where they right. watch the Oscars and then they have a performance after. And, um, and he, he invited us and we were just absolutely, absolutely. We will be there. All the guys got like tuxes and their, their significant others got like nice dresses and, um, and all these, you know, famous people. I mean, Robert Kraft was there, which I was more impressed with that than I was like, I mean, that's the owner of the Patriots. I mean, that's a billionaire. It was just a room. I don't – I can't describe that kind of – like, you know, I always say, like, I know Alabama well, but I don't that, – that's a different thing, man. That's a different thing. It's Los Angeles. Where is it at? Oh, Does he man, have it at a, at a club or does he rent like a – No, it was, it, was like a, it was like an event space. You, okay. You could, I mean, and then they had, like, big tents. And, and – but one of the coolest experiences – so – we have a song on our second record called I'll Be Your Woman. And, and it's a, I love that song. It's one of my favorites. But one of the coolest experiences to me of that whole, like that picture was really cool. It really was. But to me, the amazing thing was when me and Bro and who I was a guitar player, like we went backstage or like we went to Elton's quarters or wherever he was. And Elton's like, all right, what are we going to do with this? And so we start playing the song and it's just me, Elton John and Bro in this room. And we're doing this song and I'm being like, Oh yeah, that's a, you know, that sounds great. You know, that, that, and it's Elton John. And um, that to me, like those are the kind of moments I cherish because like, that's something that only the three of us in that room can share. Did um, he, what did he, what song did you do? I'll be your woman. So what he, I, I did the. Oh yeah. So I, he, did he pick it or did you guys pick it? We both picked it. Okay. I mean, I, I, he picked, I mean, you know, he was, he, he, uh, I think he, I mean, I think he picked it initially. I can't remember, but, um, but it was pretty amazing. It was a pretty cool experience. And I, 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 yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. Let's go back for a second. Cause this is one of my, my favorite moments when people start talking to just random celebrities. How does the initial call from Elton come in? Are you told Elton's about to call or do you just look down and, and see Elton John on the caller ID? What's happening? Uh, ba- basically. Basically. Well, you don't see it on the caller ID, first off. Uh, Did you scream private. Elton John out? Uh, <laughs> it's a private number. Okay, uh, so was, when it said private, what I'm saying is, said, did you have a heads up? Yeah, someone told okay. me Elton's going to call you. Okay. Our manager, I think, told me, like, Elton's going to call you today. Okay. So any call you get, pick up. And, yeah, it was always an unknown number. Um, anytime he called, um, and, uh, I, you know, I had his email, uh, and yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was surreal. It really was. It was surreal. And, uh, you know, I was kind of, it was just like, that's, that's not even something that you even dream about or anything like that. You just kind of go, well, that happened, (laughs) you know, like, I don't know what else it's, it's weird for me because like he is unbelievably kind and generous with his time and i i mean you probably know this about me like i am not a social butterfly i don't maintain relationships really well Mm -hmm. and so i've always struggled with that with him because like he is so nice and so kind and i'm sure if i emailed him tomorrow he would respond but i'm always just kind of like well i don't know what we're going to talk about like i you know like we can talk about records maybe so it it, it is it is weird for me and I, i probably get in my own head about that stuff sometimes but uh yeah, it was an it was an unknown number. Speaking of uh, not being a good friend, um, I I told Dave Silva from Conrad Thompson Enterprises that I was going to interview you, and he said he's been waiting on an album for a year. Huh? Yeah, I know. I know what happened. What are you doing? Well, um, <laughs> I don't. I don't like Dave. I'm just going to say it. Uh, <laughs> no, Dave is like one of the nicest people I'd, of all of you. Of, of all of you guys, of all of you guys, Dave is like one of the nicest people, so smiling and happy. I'm not kidding. I had a record 
on my chair right back here. I said, had it, Dave Silva had his address forever. And I'll talk about for, and, and then eventually my wife was like, Hey, you're going to like, I was, we were on tour or something. I was, I just, it, it, I, Hey, I got him though. I got him. We're, I'm going to send him something soon. Um, you hadn't said it. He no. even said he reminded you on Instagram yeah, the other did. day. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> hey, look, we've had a pandemic. All right. <laughs> we've had a pandemic. I can't, I can't. That's you know, a good excuse for everything. Guys, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I am not going to FedEx <laughs> at this point for Dave Silva. <laughs> you heard it here first, Dave. You're hearing breaking news. <laughs> still sitting at his house. So nice. That guy's so nice. Yeah. It was, it, no, it made me feel bad. But then I was, I was like, well, and you know, Dave, like he says, hey, man, you know, and I'm like, nah, I, I, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry, buddy. I really am. I'm really, really sorry. That's why I got to send, I got to send, so I got to send him something special. Um, so I'm seeing if I've got, um, got something that's, that's special. Dave, if you're watching this, uh, you can see the album over my shoulder. Paul sent me that the day after I met him. He, he said, I, I'm going to send this to Dave. And I said, I want it. And he said, you sent it to me, Paul. Yeah. Well, there you go. See, let's, we need to address the elephant in the room. I'm glad you hadn't called me out on it. Uh, I'm basically like that obsessed girlfriend meme. Uh, if you can see the background, if you're watching on YouTube, we have I have the album, uh, which has the set list attached. Uh, I'm a set list guy. Uh, then we have three posters behind me, all framed, all autographed, all St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Does that creep you out? Do you regret ever giving me your number? No, not at all. What about but, yeah, the cup? I've got the. the uh, I I I I got to be honest with you. I forgot that we sold those. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. No, it's no. I've I've always said this. I we had a very uh, and I, I think I tried to express to you then how rare this was in my life. You know, at that point, probably a lot less rare now, maybe. Um, but that just going to hang out with people, going to do go to dinner, all of that, like. I can't tell you that's the only time and I would say about five years that I was able to do that. And, um, so it was You're talking about when we, we hung out in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. We, um, so I want to tell everybody that's looking, I got, I think I got, yeah, I got 16, the little one, 17. Uh, do you remember this one? The ramen? The, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this, this the gray dots? Oh, the gray dots. That's the Alabama tour. Alabama theater? Uh, no, Alabama tour. We did. We called it the Alabama World Tour, and we only played places in Alabama. It was a yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think I got it from Alabama theater though. Is that that year? Ah, uh, it could be Huntsville. I don't know. Maybe Huntsville. Okay, and then the middle is the ramen. Middle's the ramen. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, we got um. If people can see that, the, we got the Manser face right there too. But <laughs> Manser's really impressed by your. We got the set list on the bottom. And then I believe that's 18 over here. That's 18. That's 18. Is that the – it looks very – we call it the Mardi Gras poster. I don't know what it you is, were going for. That's a, that's a great that's, – that's actually one of my favorite posters we made. Um, Super cool looking poster. Um, yeah, that one was – that was actually the tour. I want to say that that was – I think that one mm, – was that in Nashville? I can't remember. I think yes, it was. Because that's, that was the – that was the, the, the February, March – run and then i have the the uh, album over here um and i have more i have the pink vinyl that was a super cool one you had that's that's a that's a that's a that's a rare one the uh the breast cancer uh, awareness when you did um so i'm i'm basically obsessed with girlfriend over here uh, <laughs> i apologize for fangirling out but so well, let's talk about it so the first time we meet is very briefly in huntsville mm -hmm. conrad thompson of course is a mutual friend of ours and uh, I was really mad. He hits me up and he says, hey, this guy, Paul, from a band called The Broken Bones, has <laughs> messaged me. And we've talked on Instagram. And he said, we're coming to Huntsville. He's a fan of the podcast and asked me if I wanted to go to the show. And he said he'll get us in. Are you okay? Are you want to go with us? And I was like, buddy, I, I bought mine first day. Sorry, I'm a fan. <laughs> <of the> ass. <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, and then, so we meet there and then 
we end up, the dinner you're talking about is almost a year to the day. Mm -hmm. uh, we are at double or nothing, right? Was that double or yeah. nothing? Double or double, nothing, yeah. Double or nothing for AW Starcast weekend in Las Vegas, and uh, you you actually had a chance to come out there. That was that was a rare time for you to get away for a weekend, wasn't it? It was. Uh, I cannot express enough how rare that was. Uh, my wife and the only I really think the only way it happened is my wife was working in Ireland, and we didn't have any show. You know, AEW started up, and I was like, man, I really want to go out there. And and Conrad was doing the the pod the what is it the starcast starcast and y'all you were working and it was like one of those things where i was like man i kind of want to go out there and do it and so i just kind of bit the bullet went out there and and ended up you know i thought you know conrad was so busy and i was like i was like but i, I mean i loved hanging out with y'all and um and we really hit it off i think we get get along really well i mean i could be wrong um, me and you or you and conrad me and you. <laughs> I was about to say, you and Conrad are, y'all love to get it off. Y'all are, are hit it off great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he I gets like mad because you won't talk to him. This goes back to the Elton John deal. You're friends with him. You won't hit him up. I know. This is the thing about Conrad, though. Conrad, to me, is, is like, he's become a huge celebrity in a, lot of cir in a lot of circles. So I Do you admit yeah. he's a bigger celebrity than you now? I think he probably is <laughs> in certain circles. Let's be honest. I still think, <laughs> I still think there are more females that know who I am than know who Conrad is. A hundred, a hundred. <laughs> I, that I know. Now, there's he don't have more, Elton John's email. I can promise that I, you that. There's probably more males that know who Conrad is now. Like more neckbeards that know who Conrad is. <laughs> neckbeards. <laughs> You're talking to two, right? I, I know, exactly. What are I'm you just, doing? Growing the beard. I'm trying, I'm trying, man. It's, my it's a pandemic. I know it's a pandemic. I don't. I don't have to shave for shows right now. Do you always grow? Do you always grow when you're off the road, or is this new? Uh, it varies. Sometimes it's just out of laziness, you know. Um, no, I, I I like Conrad a lot. I just it's always one of those things like we've kind of hit each other and it's been busy and yeah, you know, it's like it's just I don't know. I always I always I have this a lot of anxiety feeling like I'm bothering people, and I know that's stupid, but yeah. it's, it's just it's a personality tick. It really is. It's a personality tick. Uh, but he's actually great, man. He, he's, I get why he's successful in business. Because that guy knows how to, like, he just, you know, every once in a while, he'll just you know, boop, you know, throw something. I'm like, man, God, you're really good at this. I'm, I'm jealous of his ability. Well, I think one of his golden abilities is, and we joke about it a lot, is no matter who he meets, he makes you feel like you're, you've been best friends forever. 100%. Is that, 100%. I mean, I don't know how he does it. Uh, but. You know, I don't, I don't like anybody, but, and they don't like me, but, and then you don't ever talk to anybody. You make friends and then never talk. So that's, that's, hey, we've, to be fair, we have communicated. I've been, I've been all right with you. It's not See, been bad. I, I feel like, I feel like I'm bothering you when I hit you up. No, no, no. So, I mean, as long as you're not like, hey, man, uh, can you get me 20 tickets into the Red Rocks? I That's, think I did for Orange Beach, though. I think I that was, dude, Orange <laughs> Beach? Come on, buddy. You can hit me up for Orange Beach. All right, if it's in the state of Alabama, do I got... No, 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 no. not the state of Alabama, just not Orange the state Beach. Of Alabama. Just, just now Huntsville and okay. Orange Beach, don't ever Orange hit Beach. me up for Birmingham. Don't ever hit me up for Birmingham. I'll you don't have you. anybody hitting you up for free Birmingham tickets. Dude, dude. oh, dude, we had, <laughs> when we play the Alabama Theater, um, we have to rent a room next door to the theater and it has over 200 people in it. Oh, and, and I'm not trying to be rude, but there ain't a lot of people want to take pictures with a trombone player <laughs> and I love them, you know, I love, but it's just like, it is, it is like present. My wife leaves. My wife's like, I'm not doing this. There's too much going on. There's too much going on and everybody, you know, and I don't mind. I mean, it's, it's part of it, you know, cause right. You live in the city and you know, th you know, it's like, you know, people and, and I'm not mad at them. It's just, it's just how it works. So that's why I like Birmingham is just like, whew, man, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something. What, um, so let's talk about, let's wrap up Vegas a little bit. Cause we were talking about this is almost <laughs> a year to a day. We hang out, uh, start. My favorite part is we went and ate dinner and you kept going, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, I'm, well, I'm working the convention. 
and you're like, all right, we'll stop by. What are you going to be doing? We'll hang out. And I'm like, no, no, Paul, I'm working the convention. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I got it. And then I show up and I'm literally running the meet and greet for million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. And you're like, Oh, you're working the convention. Oh yeah. You thought I meant just like walking around. No, dude. You're like, you are you are working, son. You were working. No, you and the wife. Um she had cyborg from right? UFC. Man. Oh God. Yeah. Um uh yeah, y'all were work. I think that's what was kind of strange for me because I was I was like, I was like, I don't know anybody here and I don't really want to get to know anybody here. <laughs> So well, that I was like, when there was a lot of champions walking around. That, oh, that was, oh god, man! That we had that cab ride with your wife and <laughs> talk about all the reptiles and all the champions walking around, man. So if, if people have missed it, my wife, Big Booty Judy, um, she's at Starcast, she's at Las Vegas, and she walks in this vendor room where everybody is doing their meet and greets, and she says, "Hey, am I supposed to know all these people?" And I'm like. You mean the wrestlers? And she's like, no, 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 all the people walking around. I'm like, no, why would you even think that? She goes, there's, they all got belts. Are they all champions? Are they champions? Should I know what, what who they wrestle for? How many champions are there? I'm like, no. Uh, I was like, I, you're not going to be able to grab this, but they can just buy a belt. And she's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't get what's going on here. Yeah, she, God, she's a saint. Uh, she's so, a funny, saint. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Yeah, you're asking me when we first signed on about the reptiles. We have the bearded dragon, we have a snake, we have a tarantula, two dogs, a cat, and now, because of the pandemic, my wife has started a garden and a chicken coop. That's what I'm dealing with. Man, man. Meanwhile, I look over at you, and you're weed eating in your in your cape. That's the fun you're having. Yeah, that's, I mean, honestly, like, it's trying to, how do I stay creative? Because I don't like social media. I hate it with a pure and holy passion. But it's like during during this time, you kind of like you got to do funny stuff. And and uh, yeah, I have to be fair. I have done a lot of yard work more than <laughs> I've done in a long time. So but, let's talk about after we hang out. You literally almost die. First off, we need to talk about me sitting next to Jesus. Oh, you uh, did. We went to Dover and pay for you. Yeah, and I sat sat next to Jesus. Well, the beauty is Conrad said he had tickets, and you're like, I don't want to mess with Conrad. He's busy. Yeah, right. Basically, yeah. Conrad had, had, um, had, had, you know, he it, it was he was nice enough, but I just once again that personal anxiety, of like I don't know, man. He's busy. I don't know. He probably doesn't even know, forget about me. You know, blah blah blah. He's like king of double or nothing and whatever. And and so I was so I was next to a guy. I think I had a wheelchair chair or something weird. And the guy had, like, a cheap ticket, and I was kind of like, well, yeah, I better get it, man. And then I swear to God, 10 minutes later, uh, Conrad texted me, like, hey, man, what do you want me to have to get the ticket? And I was like, oh, my God. Didn't you, it wasn't, like, $10 for the ticket? It was nuts. It was – I don't know. And it was four seats. It, well, it was – yeah, but it was – I mean, I paid for it because I sat next to Jesus. <laughs> you did. You, the, the beauty of that pay-per-view is there's a guy dressed up as Jesus – and we're even looking, we're even looking at Jesus on the floor. And I'm like, look at this guy dressed. And he was going, you know, he's super fan. He is going oh, nuts. Was, and you finally mad. text him and go, I go, where are you sitting, dude? You're like, beside Jesus. <laughs> I look down, I see that hat right there. And I'm like, OMG. It was he's in the perfect spot. It was unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, was Jesus yeah, nice? Was, Jesus was was very nice, but man, they were it was they were on his on his ass. <laughs> you know, they were just you know they were. <laughs> of all people, you get sat next to Jesus is my favorite. Thank you. Wheelchair next to Jesus, and some people started chanting like "Heal the man in the wheelchair," and it was just it was just like no. Oh. Oh. No. Kill the man in the oh, wheelchair. Right, that was a problem. But yes, no, heal, heal, heal. Oh. Lay, lay hands on him and heal. Heal the man in the wheelchair. I love it. All right, let's ask. So then, 
So then, uh, <laughs> so, so then that then we. Yeah. Nope. Did I lose you? Oh, I'm here. No. Okay. We are having. No, a well, then, video. then, yeah, yeah. Then, um, I went. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, and we, I get on a plane the next day by myself. Early in the morning, in my, my right side was hurt. I got on the plane with my right side hurting. I was like, oh, okay. And then get home, and it's like, man, it started hurting a little more, a little more down. And so I'd say about 2 a.m. in the morning, my wife's not home. I'm by myself. I got two dogs and, and me. And I like, try to tough something out. Like I just, I, I just, I'll wake up as gas or something. And turns out, yeah, I went to the emergency room. I got in there, and um, and uh, I had, uh, and I, I was the only one in, in in this emergency room, and it took an hour for me to get in there. Much I should let them know, like I, I am hurting. Get in there, and it uh, turns out that I I was uh, had appendicitis, and so I had to get a an emergency abdectomy. Uh, thirty min like thirty minutes after I went back, I was I was under. Um, had a crazy and it, it like it was it was so nuts. So I spent the next day in the hospital all night, and um, then what's crazy is the doctor told me like, hey, you need to rest for. 10 days or 14 days or whatever it was. Jeez. And I said, well, I got shows, shows in four. Um, so you got shows like, in four days and he's telling you to rest for two not, weeks. <laughs> that's not happening. Like, I, yeah. And, uh, hang on one second. Paul. Hindsight being 2020, I should listen to him. Hang on um, one second, Paul. Paul. We, cool. So you've left Vegas. <laughs> you feel bad. You're in the emergency room. You got, Appendicitis? Is that what you called it? Appendicitis. And so I had to get an emergency <laughs> abidectomy. <laughs> and you, uh, he tells you to bed rest for for two weeks, and you go, no, we we got we got shows coming up in just a few days. And you decide to buck the yeah, system. Yeah, I had to fly to Chicago. Or I was like, well, I got like I could barely talk, you know, because they put put the tube down you throw and hindsight being 2020 i sh should have told him to give me an epidural but it was an emergency um but but you know because i kept the problem is it's like one of the few times i've been like no no no, you don't understand like i make a living singing like i'm not some dude that work you know does the cover band down at the bar like this is and and i you know it was like kept trying to tell him and one of the, the anesthesiologists knew who i was and the doctor was kind of like, all right, okay, buddy, all right, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> um, but I, the doctor said two weeks, you know, 10 to, 10 to two weeks, and um, I uh, flew to Chicago four days later and got through the show, and Wait, is Chicago, I was, is that Stones? really tired at No, 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 that's, this is not as, uh, this this was, I mean, this was, it was a whiskey convention and, um, which, you know, I don't drink. So <laughs> that say, was interesting. You're at a whiskey convention. Um, can, but, convention. Yeah. We're at a whiskey convention and, uh, you know, it was like a whiskey, you know, they have little booths and stuff. It was, it was a fun show. So, but I get, get through it. You know what I mean? Just like, I'm like, <sighs> so I was like, well, if I get some rest, it'll probably get better. And the next morning we had an early flight to Raleigh, North Carolina. And man, my throat was okay. But as the day progressed, it was just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. By the time we got to sound check, I was like, I can't, I can't sing. I couldn't talk barely. Um, and, but I, I kept being like, okay, I'm going to get rest. So I get, I get rest and doors open and we've got i think there was like three thousand tickets sold wow and i i was yeah i was and 
I, it, the rest didn't help and I couldn't talk. talk. And so we had, we called in a doctor, can you get a shot in the throat just to get through tonight? Um, he's like, no. And then I called my ENT who is on speed dial for me. Well, luckily here in Birmingham, he's unbelievable. I mean, he saved me so many times and he was like, you need to get on the next plane to Birmingham then do not sing tonight. He said, do not. Wow. And um, so we're sitting, I, this is no joke. We're sitting, there's 3000 people waiting for me to play and I have to come out on stage and, you know, and they could hear it in my voice and, and the band, you know, we were like, Hey, we'll come back. Like, but the band played, I think 25 minutes, 30 minutes of instrumentals. Um, wow. And, you know, yeah, they, 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 I mean, and I mean, I, I, I play with a killer band and, and I knew that they, they did great. And I was just feeling awful. I got on the plane next day, went to the doctor and he was like, he's like, if you'd have figured out, if you'd gotten a shot or figured out a way to sing, that could have been it for your voice. And I was, he was like, that's where it was like, I, where I, when I felt bad in Raleigh, I was like, oh, you know, cause you know, I want to fight through. I'm just, right. this is anytime you're a performer, you want to get through. And um, he was like, you don't understand how close you were to, to really doing some permanent damage. And um, so then we canceled everything, I think, for two weeks. And he, you know, took care of me. Sco you know, they scope you out, which I've gotten used to that, which is the – I always, like well, – the first time he was, like, going to scope my throat, I was like, all right, go ahead. And he's like, no, no, we go up the nose. I was like, oh. uh, so, yeah, so – we did. I, I I've had that ha done that a few times, but but yeah, I was really close. So it was a weird like we had that great time in Vegas, and it was a lot of fun, and we got to hang out. And, and I was like, oh man, you know, got to hang out with some people I like. And then like two days later, I was in the emergency room, and like, it was weird because I, I was like, I was like, man, I I almost was like, I'm gonna have to change careers. And um, so it was a it was it was that was a weird weird week. Um, and it's just funny that y'all, you know, y'all are a part of that story, but yeah, it was, a uh, talk about scary. It was, it's, it's scared me for sure. I mean, you went from texting me, Hey, there's a lot of champions at the airport to there's you in a shot in the hospital. And I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> uh, it's true. So it's it'll forever true. go down as the, the one night you partied with Cassio, you end up in the hospital and almost die and lose your career. So <laughs> I get it now why you yeah. don't ever text me. I from it's painful memory, but that's fine. Yeah, no, that's not why, but <laughs> but uh <laughs> So, let me ask you this. This is a weird question. What what would have ha what would you have done? You said, "Hey, I might have to change careers." What would you have done, you think? I mean, did you get close mm -hmm. to thinking that hard about it or were were you just like, "Hey, this could be going bad." I mean, I Honestly, no more than I'm thinking about it right now yeah. um, with all the, you know, all this going on. Um, no, actually, you know what? The, I, I, I thought about it a little bit. I, I think I, this is going to sound so lame. Um, I would probably, I have a big fascination with art history. Art <laughs> so I history. would probably finish. Yeah. I love I, that. It's one of those weird things. Um, I feel like it balances out the professional wrestling love. <laughs> um and, <laughs> and i think i would probably go back to you know go back to school and you know try to go through an art history you know get through an art history program and um you know my wife works for for you know a university so she's she's an academic i i i, I think I, it would be hard for me not to do something i enjoy you know right. i think after doing this yeah it would be it would be hard to be like well, all right i'm gonna go hit the, the salt mines. So, um, but the, actually what's crazy, the worst I ever got, we had a tour over in Europe one time and I was in Geneva, Switzerland. And I serious, it was just, it was just not a good time. Like it was just, I think it's when Brexit happened. So mm -hmm. all of our, we get, we, I think all of our expenses were up here and what we got paid was down here because of the value um Ooh. that we and so our so we were like losing our ass in that tour and um 
and we were just it just kind of spiraled and we were like oh god this is awful and we were for some reason we were in geneva for two days and that's the only time in my whole this whole time that i was like i was like i'm, I'm flying home when i'm done <laughs> i'm done wow i was looking at like landscaping services <laughs> um it was it was for it was it, that's the closest i've ever gotten um to something like that because it was just i was just like i was i was miserable in a lot of ways and so um but who yeah known, yeah that's no nah, i mean who would have known brexit would have was about to break up st paul and the broken bones <laughs> man it was nuts i mean our business manager was like it ain't good guys it's just <laughs> not good Cause you know, touring over over the uh, touring over there is, uh, you know, it's it's a little it's it's different, you know, on the financial end of things. And um, most fans that tour over there don't make any money, and and we've been fortunate a few times to make money. Um, but that one, man, whoo, that was that was a tough that was a tough pill to swallow. Um, because you're kind of like, why am I here? How is your uh, how is your level as a band? How's your level of of um fandom over there i know there's some bands that you you know i talk to some bands that we meet in the rock world that are i don't want to say struggling over here but middle of the pack and then they can go to huge right. venues overseas uh is that are you guys pretty much the same across the board or is there places where you go oh that's our that's our bread and butter there or just big uh, fandom maybe not bread and butter i would but. say well, I mean, uh, your bigger cities, London, we played the Roundhouse, which is like, where like, I think Pink Floyd played. And I mean, it's, it's, that's about, I think that's a 4,000 cap room. Um, so it's, it's not totally dissimilar to what we do over here. So it's about um, the same in, across the board there. In, our, in the big, it's, it's about the same, it's about the same uh, in, in certain markets for sure. Like the UK for sure. France is a little tricky. Uh, at times, Spain is it can also be like we we did one thing one time. Germany is actually surprisingly um, is it does well for us. Um, uh, we did one thing one time in the Czech Republic and played to like twenty thousand people, and that's still to this day one of the best shows I've ever been a part of. What, I mean, what was it for? Was, well, I mean, are you you got is it a it's the festival? Jeez, twenty thousand. Yeah, outdoor and, or indoor? And dude, like outdoor, and it was just, it was man, it was, it was madness. I, I've just never. It was one of those experiences that I was just like, this is. I I will never be able like that. To, that's been the bar for probably the last three or four years, or I'd say wow. three years, but like. Cause you know, that's the problem. It's an adrenaline rush, you know? So, you know, what used to be a great crowd is now a good crowd. And what, it, you know, like it just kind of, you get so spoiled, yeah. honestly. Bottle um, tree, 225, uh, 200,000, <laughs> 20,000. Yeah, it was 20,000. Yeah. It was nuts, man. And like, I couldn't, we couldn't hear ourselves play. They were cheering so loud. Like Whoa. it was a, uh, I just, you know, you know when you see those like episodes, like those Queen performances at Live yeah. Aid and stuff like that. Um, that's the first time that it ever felt like that. Um, it just looks a sea of people like, out this there. Is a sea of people, and 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 everybody from front to back was listening and was like just in pure ecstasy. And um, maybe they were taking ecstasy. I don't know. But, <laughs> um. um <laughs> But it, it was a, it was a, that one, that one's one I forget. You did, um, now the, the time right after Vegas when you did Stones, was that Wrigley Field? No, it was Soldier Field. Soldier Field, okay. A little bigger, bigger than Wrigley. <laughs> how does, how does, how was that show? Cause uh, was that your first show back after the, I think so. I think it was. Actually, I think it was the first show back. Um, because we Cause were, remember, we were like, Paul, you gotta get better. you gotta get better for that one. Yeah, I remember talking to you and you going, Hey, my goal is, you know, we might miss some, but my goal is we can't we of course can't miss that one. That was the one. Um 
uh, that one, and it was amazing. And, and, you know, that was the third time that we opened up for them. Um, and, uh, it was really, it was, it was fun. The thing, the one problem is with those shows is like, you'll win some people over, you know, um, but some people are like, when are you over? I want to see the stones. Like, let's go. And, um, and so that part is a little, little tricky. Um, but you know, we, we, those shows is just people being receptive and cheering and, um, you know, to be fair, we did not, um, we did not get as loud as cheers as, uh, Mick Jagger did, that's for sure. <laughs> but, but it was cool, man. It was, I mean, like, I, I never, you know, for me as a sports fan, it's just fun to be like in the locker room or, you know, those kinds yeah. of things. You know, that to me is like, uh, is a lot of fun. You know, you don't get access. Like we did the Jerry Dome. They did a festival in the Jerry Dome in Dallas and our dressing our dressing rooms were, were where the, the Cowboys have their locker room and stuff. And, oh yeah. And that, that's the, I know it's goofy, but that stuff to me is like so much fun. Uh, um, and so when you get to do, do those kinds of things, it's amazing. And they were, they were very gracious and wonderful. And, and Keith Richards has always been a big, has been a big fan. Um, I think he still is. Um, they, uh, and so it's, it's, it's weird for sure. Let's talk about one more picture. Uh, we're going to, I don't know how much time you got, but, uh, <laughs> I will go one more because this is one of my favorites is, uh, and I'm sure it's probably one of your favorites too, is you guys did Letterman a few times, <laughs> uh, but you guys were on the last show. Uh, no, we were not. Wasn't that one? It was close to the last, wasn't it? It was on it. It was his last year. Yes. Oh, right. okay. It was his last year. Well, then not who cares? Not quite. Not quite. Yeah, who cares? No, that that performance didn't change our career or anything. Yeah, it did actually. It changed our career for forever. All right, so let's um, get some myths out that about Letterman. Wasn't ama- One is it freezing cold in there? Okay, is it? Uh, it's cold. It's freezing. It is cold. It's really cold. And was he cold? He actually was not. Okay. Uh, this is a really fun story. Um, he got booked and like, so we had released half the city in February, 2014. Right. Okay. And so that was, that performance was January, 2015. Okay. And so we were kind of, you know, your record. I mean, if people don't know, like a record cycle usually starts why it's, it's everybody typically tries to release every two years. That's been kind of the, like, industry standard um now now there's really no rules but that's typically how it goes so you're 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 the record cycle kind of dies off after you know six nine months or so in that range and so we were kind of at that we we had great success and we were like oh great like we could sell 500 cap rooms out all over the country and i was like man that's amazing that's great so then we booked that performance and um uh, and we were told that like he was very upset that we were not the the he was not the first late night performance he was very i mean apparently he had gotten onto his booker like hey why do why are we we not on this server wow um uh, which you never know when you hear stuff like that you know what i mean uh, um the i think the producer come comes back and talks to us and like, hey, look, I just want y'all to know, like, he's a really big fan. And I was just like, I'm sure you tell everybody that that comes in here. Like, oh, yeah, he's, like, he's a big fan. And she said, I think, yeah, she or he, I, I can't quite remember, but she uh, said, look, he could ask for an encore. And I didn't know that 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 was a thing like i didn't know that that was a big deal um but there's i think there's only been uh, i think you can count them on one hand how many encores he's asked for in the history so is the encore off um, camera just for the crowd mm-mm, it was on camera so oh 
so we get like so we get there and you know we're on stage and he anyone who's seen the video he goes into this long like really complimentary really kind like you know you're all ready you know da, da, you know building it up building it up building it up build, like just talking to me and i'm like i was not prepared to talk to david letterman like, <laughs> like i'm not you know i'm just not prepared for that and he was just so it was just it was just oh and i thought in my mind at the time i thought if they play what he is saying right now this is going to be a big deal as long as we don't screw up this performance Right. And but I thought they were gonna cut it because he went. I'm talking. He went a good like minute and a half or something. It was. It was just. It seemed. It seemed like an eternity, um, because it was just like, oh god, oh god, oh god. And um, we do the performance, and and he, you know, obviously does the thing. But he's like, hey guys, let's you know, let's hear an encore. So we we go into the encore and then you know do something for the web. And he wow. was um really nice. Paul Schaefer was really nice. That the band was really nice. It was uh. And what happened in that is we went from like, okay, well, things are winding up to everything going, going right back up. And we, it, um, that changed our trajectory in a lot of ways. Cause you know, just having Letterman's blessing, you know, I don't, I honestly, I don't even know if that's a thing anymore, you know, getting a late night host, you know, kind of, to tab you as the the next thing or whatever. I don't think that, I don't think anyone has that power anymore, but Letterman kind of did. Yeah. And um, it changed, it changed, it changed. I mean, maybe Saturday Night Live do, uh, still does, um, but uh, it's, man, it, it changed everything. And it, I will, you know, it's one of those things I'll just be eternally grateful for. And, and uh, he, yeah, no, I, 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 I can attest not, not, not cold at, at all. I mean, it was very kind. That's awesome. And something I'll never forget. So uh, let's talk about some music. Um, of course, we've, you know, all tours canceled. We kind of hinted about that, of course, and everybody's not on the road. You're at home. You're doing more yard work instead of shows. Um, are you – How how is the music process? Do you guys writing? Are you passing tracks back and forth? Uh, I've talked to a couple of different musicians and everybody's kind of different. Of course, everybody's, you know, I, I talked to some people are, Hey, I've already written my stuff and we were about to, you know, tour for an album. So I'm kind of out of that mode. Some people are, this is a super time to be creative. What's, what's St. Paul and the broken bones doing? Um, I mean, first off, just kind of enjoying our best of being home. You know, we, we just, for the past eight years, I don't think I've ever been home this long. Um, so that's nice. Uh, spending time with the wife and things like that. Um, but we, you know, we were getting done recording. I mean, I cut the vocals um, for whatever next record or album or whatever uh, last week. Wow. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're kind of, the thing is for us, though, it is true. Like, I am grateful that we're not, you know, we don't have a heavy financial burden of what's going, you know, go, I'm very, feel very fortunate in that, that we've kind of built it to that point. Now, granted, this thing lasts till end of 2021, and, but, I mean, Hilton is going to be hurting, you know, <laughs> there's going to be yeah. Fortune 5 country. Yeah. There's, there's no way, you know, and and we'll figure it out. I, I, but I think for us, like, we have felt super, super creative right now. Um, really? and that's been a blessing because, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's because it's kept us kind of busy mentally. Um, so we're kind of like, I mean, I don't know exactly what it's all going to look like, um, come 2021, but I do know we're going to have plenty of music. Um, so that part's really, 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 really a lot of fun. Um, I'm really excited about that aspect of it, but, um, yeah, I mean, no touring. I mean, I think, um, I think we're planning on. I can say this here. Yeah, you know, a little, little exclusive for you. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, I know. Next Friday, this is the plan. Uh, we're gonna release a live, live record or live recording. Um, Friday the fifth or the one um, after that. So, uh, the fifth. Okay. The fifth. So we so haven't, we haven't, 
haven't officially announced it yet. Just a few days. That's the plan. Ob obviously, you know, things can change and, and so on and so forth. But we just kind of, you know, keep people on their feet. And, you know, we record every show we do. Um, <laughs> mainly to point out all the mistakes. Um, <laughs> but um, but we've... <laughs> But uh, but this one we found didn't have as many mistakes on it. Um, so yeah, I think I think you know we, that's our plan is to release it Friday, um, and the fifth and and uh, and yeah. So yeah, that's that's exciting. So we're doing stuff like that. You know, we've talked about the drive-in show thing. Um, you know, but stuff like that. Uh, we're you know, we're not, I think we're not there to where we're like, oh God, what do we need to do? What do we need? We still got a lot of music we're recording and, and that kind of thing. I think once it hits fall and we, you know, things are still like they are right now, then, you know, we're going to really start getting creative. Um, but luckily we have so many live recordings that we just haven't released um, that we'll just be able to, you know, hopefully um, do some of that. Hopefully keep having product out until you, you can actually get out there. So, uh, well, let me ask you this, because I, I've seen some of the, uh, the comedy clubs have uh, started doing shows again, and I talked to some of the comics, and they were ready to be out on the road. Um, they are excited to be in front of crowds again, which I'm sure you are. Let's, let's say for some reason somebody, you know, they open it up by the end of June, um, are you, are you excited to get out of there? Or are you kind of nervous of, you know, Hey, health wise, what, what's your thoughts on that? If they opened up pretty, you know, quicker than we assume. Um, I think, and I've had this conversation, I mean, God knows I've had this conversation with our booking agent, <laughs> you know, a couple and our manager a few times, <laughs> um, you know, cause everybody's turned into, you know, uh, coronavirus Nostradamus, you know, um, and so, uh, <laughs> so, um, but I think for us, I think what's interesting because we are typically, you know, we do, we are a, one of the few bands that does really, we do really well in the South and, and we do well in a lot of places, but the South is usually not a place that, every, you know, that bands do really well in. So we do well there. Um, I think that we're going to have, and we've talked about this, there's going to be some ethical issues um that we're gonna have to contend with you know like you don't i what i have said is i don't want to be the first but i don't want to be the last um yeah whoever the first is I is gonna get that, uh hopefully yeah the first is dead meat <laughs> they're, they're they're done and i'm sure it's gonna be like ted nugent or hank jr <laughs> or someone like that but um <laughs> which, you know and they don't care anyways so I mean, they get. <laughs> I'm just. I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, that's their thing. But, uh, but I think for us, you know, you want to make sure that 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 safety is is safety is good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. safety. There's precautions because the problem is is our business is based on packing a ton of people in a venue tightly and, and um and so i think that that's gonna have to go away theaters some of these theaters are gonna have to be like all right we're gonna lower the rent a little bit um and make these things work um but i think for us it's just i mean i i just all i wish is i knew when we were going back that's all, all right. if i knew that it was february 2021 or whatever I'd be okay with that. I think the problem is just the unknown of like, cause you're right. Like there's going to be, especially down here, there's going to be some places that are like, we don't, I mean, I don't know if this has been the case for y'all, but I've run into people like this thing's over for them. Oh uh, yeah. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? They're like, I'm done. I'm done. You know? And it's like, man, I ain't, I ain't, mm -mm, no, I ain't there yet. Um, so I think, um, you know, I think you're just trying your best to be as safe as you can. And I, I don't see us playing a show till September at the earliest. Uh, you think maybe music takes a cue from the sports world? I think you're going to have, I mean, the one thing we have in our back pocket that we've yet to do and we'll do, you know, we'll do obviously if this continues is, is a live stream. Um, yeah. I think you're going to, I think you're going to have, I think, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to 
Coupu Live Nation, but Live Nation's already like they are changing everything. You know, they're changing structures of deals and how how they do business. And and I'm not. It's not like I'm mad at them for it. I mean, this is just this is how it works. It's business. Um, but it's going to open some doors for some folks. Um, it's it's really an interesting time. Um, I think that. I think the drive-in thing is going to become a thing. Um, I really do. I think the drive-in shows is going to become a thing. Um, but I, the problem is, it's like, it's just so hard. I think crowdfunding is going to have to be, I mean, for a band like us, unless you're Taylor Swift, but that's the thing, like, unless you're Taylor Swift or Adele or some of these folks, like, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to figure out creative ways to bring in revenue. I, mean, I think that's why it's like for us, we were like, we are like, the bank account's just doing going down. So you right. got to figure out a way to get creative. And, you know, I, I think this is kind of a telltale of like why the music business is so fragile because, you know, not a ton of people are making money off music, selling music. They're all making it touring and things like that. And it's just that, that that's kind of, there's kind of been a touring bubble. There's no two ways about that. Um, so I, I don't think some bands are going to make it through this. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's hard for, I mean, I have a hard time time watching shows live on you know webcast and things like that um but you know if you got but you know if you got a thousand fans that will buy anything you do then i think you'll probably be okay right now um but it's 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 definitely taking some creativity and i'm actually having to do social media which just bugs <laughs> bugs me bugs the hell out of me <laughs> oh the biggest thorn in your side of a pandemic is getting on social media i love it yeah, that that really well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, look, we uh, I've held you too long. I, I could talk to you forever, of course, but uh, one, my wife wants to know. She she says she thinks you're a foodie. Are you a foodie? Uh, I kind of am to a degree. I mean, I'm. I, I me me and my wife flew to Mexico City in January. Just to go eat at two restaurants uh that were in the top 50 best restaurants in the world or that's whatever. a foodie one's called a puyo and one and that's quinto neal so we, i love love those kind of meals man but also you know I, what i don't i like the like nasty bird you know what i mean like the sloppy burger what i don't like let me just tell you what i don't like mm. i don't like like the tgi fridays of the world okay the like the, they like try to trick people that it's nice food and i'm like this is <laughs> this is not like you can cook this at home and it'd be better i promise and probably cheaper um those now's a bad places. time like, to tell you that uh tgi fridays is our main sponsor here at well, casio's cut well I, if you like diarrhea then enjoy tgi fridays man <laughs> i mean look i know I know when you're in a small town, it's the only the only bar you can go pick up, you know, pick up people. But man, she said I mean, so. You know, you're a foodie. If you're traveling yeah, from Dallas, I, I, I am a bit. I am a bit. So I am her a bit. question was, what's the best thing you've had delivered during the lockdown? Oh, delivered. Or have you been cooking a lot? Um, Are you and the wife cooking? I've been, I, I've been cooking a lot. Um, Evans Meats, uh, which is a down here, it's uh, like a food distributor, and it's like really fresh food, and they got like Wagyu uh, beef, and they did this thing where they uh, were giving fresh Gulf oysters, and you could buy a bag of fresh Gulf oysters. And um, I, 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 dude, I had 50 of them. And in about a day and a half, I went through all of them. So I ate them raw. I did like Rockefeller. I put them on the grill and put some butter and some Parmesan on there. Um, I, that's probably the best thing uh, I, I've had to live. We did get Gianmarco's, which is oh. an Italian restaurant down here in Birmingham. That's really, love really it. good. Um, and I, I, love, I love their veal Parmesan. Um, they also have this pasta that has a like gargonzola and a pear in it, um, and it's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess we are kind of. I didn't even think about it. We are, we are a little bit. <laughs> That's a good I like thing. good food. I mean, I do. I mean, obviously. 
No, I like the food. I love, like to me, like I'm not ashamed, but I mean, it's just not, it's a, it's not a cheap habit, but I, I also love bar. I mean, one of my favorite things is like, to me, if I could find either like, like really great high end food or like great barbecue, um, I'm, I'm in heaven. So is that your vice? You, you don't drink. I know you don't smoke. Uh, what's your vice then? Everybody's got a, a vice. Are you a foodie? I know wrestling. I mean, food, food. Well, yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if you qualify wrestling as a vice. <laughs> um, I gotta be honest and I don't know about you, but it's been really hard watching wrestling through this pandemic, man. Oh, it's, you're, it's, it's been hard. Um, you're not a fan of the, but, uh, uh, empty, the no I, fans? man, <laughs> it's brutal. It's brutal. And so, I mean, I, I, you know, like I did buy double or nothing and I really enjoyed the show. I think AEW obviously had it has, has, has been a little more creative of what they've done. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess wrestling is a little bit, um, yeah, food, food and like, you know, I love Coca-Cola. Um, those are probably my, my, my biggest, yeah, those are, those are, those are, those are probably my vices. Yeah. That's not bad. Food, food and soda and wrestling and neck beards. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. And neck beards. I mean, and probably as, I mean, as you can see vinyl, you know, vinyl, vinyl, you know, vinyl records. Um, but, uh, but those, you know, those, those have a little bit to do with work. Right. Uh, um, you know, so, um, yeah, I, yeah, I would say those are the things, things, um, I enjoy. And she, my wife also want to know what's the best thing you've uh, binge watched during the quarantine. Mm, that's a hard question. Did you get it on Tiger I, King? Well, if, uh, who didn't? <laughs> Everybody got in on that. Uh, I definitely watched that one. I'm trying to think what uh, something. What are you locked into right me? now? What am I locked into right now? Um, honestly, nothing. I mean, I just haven't watched it. I mean, I love watching King of the Hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love watching King of the Hill. Like, I, I, that show to me during this pandemic has been like, life, you know, because it's, you know, it's like one of those shows, it's like warm center mi middle, you know, it's just like a warm blanket for me. Yeah. Um, so I need, I, I, to me, like I need more of that kind of stuff. I mean, I love, like a show like Better Call Saul's amazing. Um, I did a little snooty thing where I got, uh, the Criterion channel, which shows all these, uh, you know, snooty what? movies and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's, do you know about the Criterion collection? No. No. Teach okay. me. Okay. So these are, <laughs> it's a collection, um, of, of like they pick movies and typically they're very, I don't want to say artsy, but they're, they're just, you know, some, a lot of subtitles, things like that, uh, things that are challenging. I watched one the other day called Leviathan. That's a, it's, it, they, all they use is GoPros and they, it's a, it's just basically showing like a, like fishing, uh, like fishing, fishing uh, boat or whatever. Yeah, it's, they, it's, 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 it, it was incredible, but it has no, like, there's no like, interviews or anything like that um it's really stuff like that i sometimes was, but also with stuff like that though like you're kind of like i don't want to think right now <laughs> so it's it you got to do it you know you got to do it in doses but i i you know yeah i, I that one's been a, that i've dug, I dug in on some of that and it, that's been a lot of fun all right let's uh let's get out of here on the countdown we'll go 10 questions that we ask at the end of uh, every episode, and uh, we'll get the uh, we'll get the Paul here countdown here. I want to make sure I got the right questions that I sent you. All right, ten to one, counting down backwards. Ten, name something that's a perfect ten for you in your life. Oh man, um, honestly, like uh, I would say, like having great barbecue, like with like with my wife. Watching Alabama football. There you is go. Probably is probably a perfect ten in my life. I mean, honestly, like that is. Uh, I get close to that. We played Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
and there's a place called Burn Co. And we always end up, it's Kane's uh, place called, the place we play is called Kane's Ballroom. And Burn Co. has these ama- has this amazing barbecue. It's one of the most underrated barbecue places, I think, in the country because you just don't see it. You know, he sells top 10 lists. But we always end up somehow playing on a Saturday, and they have this huge, like, back house to the venue, and they have a huge TV screen. And we'll just watch college football all day, and they cater and put bring us all this, this amazing barbecue. Um, if I had my wife with me for that, uh, it's it would that's like man, that's it, it's the perfect day of tour for me. So it's a nine point um, nine. Yeah, that's that's wife my, makes it a ten. Sure, that's the politically correct answer for me because <laughs> I'd get in trouble if I didn't say that. <laughs> All right, number nine. Nine is the German word for no. So besides touring before pandemic, at least normal life, what'd you write off? What's no more in twenty twenty for you? This is this question's changed <laughs> since uh Yeah, since yeah, this is this is a loaded question now. Did you try uh, yeah. to do, did you try to get I something mean, out of your life in twenty twenty? I mean if, 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 including the pandemics, I've definitely written off wearing normal pants, uh, during 2020. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I don't do a lot of like resolutions or stuff. I, I, um, I, I mean, 2020 is just, man, it's, it was, it, 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 it's a very different year for us yeah. than I, I thought it was going to be. So I, it's so, that's so hard because I haven't really, I don't really write stuff off. Um, I'm not, you know, I usually, if I don't want it, I just don't just do out. it anymore. <laughs> just out. But I haven't, you know, uh, abendectomies, uh, I started <laughs> written off in 2020. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Oh, that's a, hey, that's a good goal. That's a, well, yeah, that's a good goal. Uh, we're almost at June and you're good. We're in June and you're good. So <laughs> if I get another one of those, something's wrong. All right, uh, number eight, what do you want to be the last thing that you ate in life? What's your last meal? What do you want before – what's your oh, – you know man. this is your last meal, the last thing you're ever going to eat. Last thing I'm ever going to eat. It's going to be barbecue, right? You no, know, I don't know. Um, you can fly things in. You can have people cook anything. This is smorgasbord. I mean, getting oh, – man, it, it's 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 it's, it's – Getting Franklin's barbecue brisket uh, flown in would be one of my top things. But I also, for me, like Franklin's, is that Austin? I feel, hell yeah. Dude, have you ever had it? Um, you know what? I'm gonna. You put me on the spot. I've had barbecue at Austin at one of the famous places, but I can't remember which one. It's it's amazing. Um, it's one. Of my, it's it's definitely the best brisket. I've is ever it the had. one where they have the um, ramp going but, down and they sell out like by noon? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. that's it. It's fantastic. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, I would do uh, maybe honestly though, um, you, like being for real, um, like death row style. I would probably <laughs> get like an, an, <laughs> a, a nice steak and and Kraft's macaroni and cheese and what? banana pudding. I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. Like who's cooking I don't know the what steak? It is. I don't know. Ooh, I actually the best steak I've I one of the I don't want to say the best, but one of the best steaks I've ever had was actually here in Birmingham uh, at Highland Bar and Grill. Um, it, I've never been able to have it. it like it was one of those like special, you know, like this came from the farm, but you know, thing. And that's the best steak. So I guess probably Frank Stitt. Um, and then Kraft Mac. I just ruined the meal with Kraft macaroni and cheese. I something did. something you about that. It up. <laughs> <laughs> something about that meal makes me feel like a god. I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm the richest man in all of Alabama when I have a meal like that. Um, how do you so like your steak? Because your people's going to ask. How do you like your steak? Med- medium rare plus. Um, that's medium rare like. plus. What's the plus? I don't know. I just like it there. It makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just like it there. Okay. <laughs> I know. I always, I always love doing that. But I mean, it's kind of in between. You know, it's not quite medium. It's not full on medium rare. It's the plus. It's in okay, between. Okay, it's a little bit in. All right, that's good. We're good. And who's I mean, doing the banana it's, pudding? It's, it, oh man, you know, uh, 
I mean, as long as it's not warm banana pudding. Um, okay, you're a cold guy. All right. Yeah, that, I'm a cold guy. I don't like that warm stuff. That's that's nah. That ain't it. Um, I uh, I I mean, you know, honestly, like we got some great like Miss Myra's here in Birmingham has a great has some great banana pudding. Do you like the um, Nilla wafers crushed sauce. up or do you like them whole? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I I don't man. I don't know if I have a preference because I'm I'm scarfing that stuff down. But you agree the Nilla wafers have to be there. Uh, it ain't banana pudding without vanilla wafers. In it. Yeah, all right. I mean, it's not. It's not. You can tell me whatever you want, <laughs> but you'll be lying. All right. Uh, lying. Number seven. What did you want to be when you grow up? What did you want to be at seven years old? <laughs> My mom. Uh, told me that I wanted for the longest time to either be a preacher or the trash man. Um, okay. I love the I, I love the idea of getting a ride on the back of the truck and picking up garbage and throwing it in the truck. Who um, didn't, man? I know, and I I was like, my mom said that she was like a little concerned about me that my goals. She didn't feel like like I didn't want to be an astronaut, you know, or. <laughs> Or whatever it was, it was the trash man, and I was like, "Well, mom, it's pretty great because you know that's something that maybe I could achieve." You know, I've never become an astronaut. That's attainable. I, I say, I say that make that's I like that. Um. All right. So, well, see what fascinates me as a grown up is the is I call him the the trash or gar whatever you want to the garbage the guy that gets your debris from your ditch. That's my guy now. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. You get that's to run the controls, one. the big claw. It's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, number six, how do you want to end up six feet under? How do you want to go out? Oh, how do I want to go out? Yeah. Oh, man. Man, that would be um, part of me. <laughs> this is awful. Uh, <laughs> part of me would like <laughs> would like to die on stage. Yeah. Um, and like and like a fireball or something, you know, something <laughs> crazy. Well, like a pyro missile. Balcony. Pyro. Something. I mean, that have to be. A, I mean, I don't know. I, I just that to me um, would be an interesting way to. Go. I mean, like if you're gonna go, like you will. Even if people hate your band, they're gonna be like, yeah, remember that guy, like. He stuck something up his ass and he blew up and got like, you know, it was like a Gallagher show or something, you know, like they won't, they won't forget that, you know? I mean, that's terrible. Honestly. Did you say honestly, fall off probably, a balcony? Fall off a balcony. I don't know. <laughs> well, I've seen you at the Ryman hanging off the balcony. I was worried for your safety. That is, that, that's, that well, so is a lot of people. Um <laughs> Uh, side note, my favorite story of that is we have a guy whose job it is to grab my belt from, you know, behind, you know, right at my ass and to make sure I don't fall off. Like, that's his job. Oh, and wow. We were playing a show. In, yeah, we have, we have a show. We were playing a show in Cleveland. And he, uh, my wife saw a picture and she, she sent me. She said, don't you ever do this again. And what it is is I'm standing on top, like over the railing on some sort of platform, right, like in the balcony. And and I I was I was told my kind of fib where I was like, oh no 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 Ross has got me he's got me you know and in the she takes a close up of Ross and Ross is behind the bar just looking up smiling at me <laughs> like doesn't have me doesn't anything and I was like man you, my wife cannot see pictures like that you always got to have me uh, you always have to have me because she will murder me. Wait, um, so Ross? I, I guess the other. One, so, like in college football, they have the get back coach that keeps everybody off the sidelines. Hey, Ross is your guy; he's your get back guy. He is. He is like he's like trying to pull me back into the sidelines, um, and and also like move people out of the way. Um, his job title is fun engineer. Um, <laughs> he is. Uh, he is unlike anybody. I have. He's unlike anybody. Ever. He's amazing. But yeah, he. Uh, He's he's my guy. I guess probably also die in my sleep. That would be great. Yeah, that's the good way to go. Easy, no, peaceful. Good Easy, peaceful. I, I would take that. All right, number five, five-finger discount. What's the last thing you stole? 
Last thing I saw. Yeah. Man. Do you steal merch from somewhere? Do you steal like a like a memory from a venue? Like you pull something off the you know out of the venue? Oh, oh uh, man, I'm trying to think if I I I, I am terrified of stealing stuff, <laughs> but I am trying to think of the last thing I stole. Um, um, that's a hard question. I actually don't know. Um, it's a good run then if you can't remember. I really not, dude. I, it's not something. I mean, I'm telling you, it's not. I, I, and it's not because I'm, I, I'm a good person. It's just the fear, uh, mm-hmm. the anxiety I would get from doing it. I just couldn't. I would just, I would just get into a puddle. Um, <laughs> it has nothing. And so I, I don't think I'm trying to think of the last thing I stole. Take something um, from a hotel. Ooh, that's a. Oh, okay. I, I have definitely taken some hangers from some hotels. That's hangers definitely happened. Hangers, that's definitely happened. Wait, well, so you're, my you're the reason they have the the funky ones with the weird tiny yeah, hangers on it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And typically, what it is is that you know my suit hanger bra- breaks or the the like cape thing that that hanger breaks. And I'm just like, I gotta, I gotta get a new hanger. So, um, they've started to do the ones that like are bolted on and you can't like really take them off. Um, so, uh, but, uh, yeah, that, that I, 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 yeah, I, I'm trying, I don't think I, you know, I don't, I'm trying not to steal too much. Are you the greatest guy ever? No, I'm not. You, I'm advice? not. Your vice is soda and wrestling, <laughs> and the only thing you've stalled is hangers. I'm a very, I'm a very impatient person. How about that? Very impatient. Okay. <laughs> Number four, your Mount Rushmore of Little Debbies. What's your top four Little Debbies of all time? You're a Southerner, so I know you're in the Little Debbie world. What are you going with? Uh, I am actually not a huge like sweets fan, but obviously, I know. Obviously, Little Debbie's, I'm very, I, I love like the Nutter Butter. Um, I love, I like the oatmeal, oatmeal. Cream pie. Cream pies. All right. I like the, uh, I like the little brownies, you know, I used to have Regular with nuts or the cosmic uh, with M&Ms? Nuts. I don't like pure chocolate, all that stuff. Like I want, you gotta, you gotta put nuts in my stuff. Um, <laughs> But <laughs> we've heard that. <laughs> yeah, of course. And then um I'm trying to think the, the fourth one is uh So you got the difficult. chocolate cupcake out there, you got the zebra cake, Swiss cake oh, roll, yeah. Christmas tree cake. Mm-hmm. So the, the the fourth one's difficult. Uh Star Crunch. The, don't they have Cinnabons? Don't they have Cinnabons? Uh, they got the like a, what they call the pecan pin, spin wheels or whatever. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. I like or the that. straight up honey bun. The honey bun. That's it. The honey bun. Oh, yeah, that's, the honey bun's strong. I, uh, I'll be honest though. The la- I don't think that that a little Debbie has been bought in this house for a. I don't think ever in this. Really? House. My wife ain't no ain't no way. No way. No way. What's your well, What's your snack? Now, when what's I, your I What's your kid. What's your go to snack? My go-to snack. Um, <laughs> um, what's my go-to snack? I mean, I like barbecue. like cashews. Yeah, bar- <laughs> well, honestly, man, like I don't, I don't snack a ton. Like what I'll do um, is like I'll get like some sort of some sort of like a uncured s- sausage meat or something like that, and get some kind of sort of cheese. And just do sausage and cheese like that's that's something. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's something that I, that's something. If I'm gonna like, I'm like, oh man, I need something to hold me over. Or do like, I'm. My wife started getting into to this thing. I, I kind of like it too. Is like the doing the like fruit and vegetable shakes. Um, those are kind of fun. Um, they can be fun. Sometimes they're not fun at all. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty. You know, a bowl of cereal, something like that. I don't know. Like I. I I don't – there's not a lot of, like, snacky snack stuff. What's your favorite cereal? Ooh, man, 
that peanut butter Captain Crunch stuff. Woo! That's a sin against that's a sin against God, man. Because it's like I cannot buy that stuff. I cannot because I'm just like, wow, well, I got that in there. Go man. All right, so let me run this by that's, you. That's a rough one. You're a cereal guy. I saw this going viral this week. The new trick they say is to put pour the cereal in the bowl, put the bowl in the freezer for an hour, then pull it out and add the milk. Interesting. Now okay. the prob okay. problem is it makes cereal an hour long process all of a sudden, which you're usually just going for a snack. But if you got time, they're saying, I mean, one girl like on BuzzFeed, I think put, you hadn't had cereal until you pull it out of the freezer. I mean, God knows I got time to try. <laughs> <laughs> this is the social media content problems. we need out of you. I know. Oh, God. We need you doing cereal videos. I know. I need that. Look, it's, it's, I mean, like, when it comes to, like, music stuff, I'm like, yeah, I can play guitar and sing a little bit. But it's like, do something funny, you know, or just say, oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. Number three, three albums. You're on a deserted island. So these are the last, these are the only three albums you can listen to for the rest of time. Now, I want I always try to tell people this isn't your this isn't necessarily, hey, these are the best albums of all time, or these are my favorite. You can only listen to these three on repeat. Hmm. Um hmm. so you might go Prince. a live album, you might go some yeah, kind of compilation. I, I, I'm gonna go Prince, Prince's album Parade. I really like that one. Um God, probably, man, and honestly, we talk uh, probably like uh, uh, Aphex Twin Selected Works from 85 to 92. It's a, that's the album. Ooh. That one's probably in there. And then, you know, honestly, you probably need something like, I, you know, you probably need something a little more, you know, cause you got the dance with Prince and you got the kind of like electronic whatever with Aphex Twin. And I feel like something like Elliot Smith's, you know, figure eight is probably a record, something, something in that vein. Or, you know, I think a great record that I love every time I listen to it. And I feel like I can listen to it, uh, is the, the Jeff Buckley record. Grace. Ooh. I think that that's nice. That's one I could listen to. I could listen to all the time. All right. I like those choices. Uh, two, um, what is the worst and best concert? So we only need two concerts. One's the worst, one's the best. Not for you, but that you watch, that you got to experience. Yeah. Hey, I'm just watching this. I mean, you could have been performing as an opener or whatever, but what's the what's you just got to watch? <laughs> um, I um. Best show I've ever seen. I've seen so many great shows. Because, I, I mean, I, I obviously I was a fan first, you know. Right. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I loved going to concerts. And, you know, I've seen a lot of folks. Honestly, though, I would say I saw Prince at Coachella. And that was one of the best shows Damn. I've ever seen. Now, that, I was front row. I waited all day to see Prince up front. Um, and nope, that one nope. was amazing. You didn't pull any ham hey, on musician strings. This was hey, I fought for to get. Oh, that was that, that. was well before that. You know, that was before. Yeah. That was well before that. I didn't know. I I waited all day. I got up like they opened doors at nine a.m. I stayed in the front at nine. I was thought there was gonna be a mad rush to the front. Um, it was me and another guy, and that was it. <laughs> um, and <laughs> and so I just stayed there from nine a.m till 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 midnight and um it was uh yeah, i never will forget it. it was one of the most you know one of the most amazing shows i ever saw one of the worst god i have seen some awful shows that might be tough for you since you're um, in the music biz it is a little tough i i won't name any names um all right let, let, let me switch honestly, it up uh oh, wait. Unless you're, if you're gonna say somebody, I'll let you. But I'll honest, let you off the hook. honestly, I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. Honestly, some of the worst shows I've ever seen. Uh, 
for a while we like to get local openers mm-hmm. and um <laughs> so you know sometimes yeah and so sometimes you like to let uh let the the uh promoter pick pick it and um there's two instances the moment you said it there's two instances that came to mind i'm not going to say names because i don't want to I don't, and honestly, I don't even remember the names. I'm going to be dead honest with you. Um, yeah, you're getting out of it. I got a, you. No, no, no. There, there was a, there was. We had a cover band open up for us one time, and they only ran on tracks. Like they were doing tracks, and then the guy would play guitar, and it was dreadful, <laughs> dreadful. Like people were hiding. Like they were waiting to come. I, we thought the show, I, they told us the show had sold out, but it, it we, were, we thought, oh, it hasn't sold out because nobody was coming in. This band was awful. I remember at some point the track went off and the guy went, the guy was like, like something with his guitar. And I was like, please just get this over with. Like, please. Cause I, to me, I like the support bands, um, you know, especially local stuff, you know, but that's sometimes why I like it. There was another guy who was like a singer songwriter guy, and I think he, what he was doing, he was trying to to be comedic. He was trying oh, to be no. funny. Oh no! And, and he was like, yeah, yeah, and he wasn't funny. And he was doing this thing where like he was getting, he was trying to have audience participation, and he was like getting like in people's like you know like get, sitting next to him in the audience and. And just like telling these awful jokes and singing off key. Did I open up for you? And I don't remember. This sounds like my show. (laughs) Uh, No, no, you could put coherent (laughs) sentences together. Um, We were just, it was, it was one of those few times. And it was early on. Um, I'm trying to think of like a show I paid money to go see. Um, Trying to think. Because I've I've only walked out of a few shows in my life. Well, that's a good um, one if you've walked out. That's a good. I've walked. I, I rarely do. I, um, but there's some shows that I've gone to see that I was just kind of like, I was like, this is not. I'm trying to think, though. I, I think don't, I I don't want to get heat, but there was a guy in Birmingham that uh, he got mad because everybody kept requesting songs, and he stormed off stage. And I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I'll text it to you. But he, he was like, guys, I, I stop stop and then they and people were like you know bigger songs that he had and he he was like fine then i'm out uh, so when you, <laughs> you know loud band, loud band you don't have to hear those things i always tell people when they do that i was like look man look folks like we write the set list every night we think about it and most of the hits you're gonna hear tonight okay so this shut up and we'll get there and enjoy the ride because that's the point of this whole thing. But we rarely have that, you know. Like we don't, we don't, we don't. I'm tr- man, I'm trying. I've seen some, some pretty crazy shows at festivals though, that we've gone to and just been like, oof. But I can't. Nothing, nothing comes to mind. Like those, I remember those openers big time. Uh, All right, let me um, switch. Just let, like, I, I'm gonna let you off the. I'm gonna let you off the hook because you are uh, in the music business. All right. So I'm gonna switch the. You, we got the best one. That's a cool side story. So. Let me get the let me get another number two that I've asked other people. I switched it to concert because I just interviewed Blue Meanie. So I I, I didn't want to ask him this normal question, but I usually ask number two, if you were in a wrestler right now, who would be your tag team partner? Oh, oh. you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I love Orange Cassidy. Yeah. I think that whole thing is just I think that whole thing is just amazing. I actually uh, really want to try to convince the guys, yeah, yeah, to to let me get Orange Cassidy to shoot a dance video for us for one of our songs, um, and s- see if I think that that would be brilliant. Um, but the problem is, I'm not sure our audience is gonna know what's going <laughs> on, um, you know. But well, like I you think said, that, you got I all the ladies all listening to you, not many neck beards. That that's not. I mean, that that is what's kind of fun about the wrestling. The wrestling crowd is like, I can go there, and it's like there might be a couple of people, 
you know, but it's not, it's not crazy, you know, um, but it is funny because I, I have, I've actually, you know, during this time, I've, I've thought about like reaching out to AEW or somebody and being like, hey, if y'all want a theme song, like we'll write one for you and we'll do it. We'll do it on the cheap. Just to, just cause. Oh! Yeah. That's for real. Like I, I, I'm put, I'm putting that out there now. Well, it's out so, here now. Oh, we can get this into the hands of the right people. Hey, that's right. Hey, that's right. That's or Yeah. You, you're connected. You're, uh, <laughs> you know. All right. But, <laughs> All right. Top, top one. And this, this could be interesting to you because uh, of so many people you worked with and, uh, so I usually ask, what's the most famous person saved in your phone? Uh, and we know from your own words that whoever it is, you don't even talk yeah. to them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't, you, it's, I, I have, um, I have emails and things like that. I mean, Elton is obviously one of the most, definitely one of the most famous, um, I just give you know, us his email. Yeah. Is it ejohn6969 no. at gmail? What is it? Yes, <laughs> I need to put that on public record. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what I need. Who's to do. in your phone? Who's saved in your phone? Who saved in my phone? Um, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of folks. I don't, I mean, I can't even, I don't know who the most famous one is, you know. Um, but I, the problem is, is like, I'm trying to think like who, um, Brittany, you know, of the shakes, but you know, I mean, that's Brittany Howard that's album a, shakes. Yeah. Um, I don't, but the thing is, is like, it's not like, I don't, I've never used it, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> like, never you know, used well, I love it. I think, I said, yes, it's a terrible question to ask me. <laughs> it really is. I've got emails, you know, like Elton's and, and folks like that, and I, I, you know, have those kinds of things. I mean, I, I don't, I don't seek, I, you know, what's weird is like with that stuff, like I don't really seek that stuff out, you know, I don't, yeah. I'm like, eh. I don't, I can't, it's hard for me to be friends. It's like with wrestlers or something. I'm sure that if I pursued that, I could have some wrestling friends and, you know, who are wrestlers and stuff, but I, I just, I don't know, like, I don't, you don't want your friends to be live an abnormal life too you know <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah it's, it's just the hard you know like what are we how are we going to get close i guess is the, the the question i always wonder and that's kind of what i'll pursue but i like having acquaintances i'm sure uh, it's the same kind of with yeah, the I'm the worst person. uh we jo we joke about it in the in the comic world uh you know somebody will say i see a comedian and go hey are you friends with that person and it's like yeah but we're, if we're both on the road, we never, we might not see each other for four years. I mean, you're friends with somebody. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, right. That I think that that's, you know, actually, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's true. You're exactly right. I mean, that's really what it's about. Like for me, it's like, if I see some of these folks, like we're, we're, we're like, Oh, Hey, how you doing? You know, like we're all nice, but like, it's just, I mean, you know, this, I mean, just ha having a relationship with me, like, you know, it's like, hey, when are you going to be in town? When, you know, when are you going to do this? You know, I'm already kind of reclusive. So it's like, it's just hard. Um, and I, I did. I, I've tried, like I said, I've tried to be better about it. And that's usually my, like, New Year's resolution every year. Um, but, yeah, I think that that's true. I, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I can't, I haven't really called. I'm, it's usually our business that I'm so concerned about. I mean, I guess Conrad Thompson now. I guess he's, he's the most <laughs> famous person in my phone. There you go. That's how you wrap that up. There right you go. There, That's how you wrap that up. That's how you do it. Well, dude, thank you, man. We appreciate you uh, hanging out with us. Uh, you broke some news. We got new music coming out. Uh, we're going to get it out in the universe yeah. that you want to work with AEW. We, we got all this out there, man. It's it's happening. Well, this is, you know, this is, this is the only, uh, this is the only time I do podcast or anything is, uh, when, you know, the person, I was wondering though, cause I was like, you know, I was like, Oh, when's he, when's he gonna, cause you asked and I was like, Oh, does well, he know I never leave the house? Can he, can we just do this via Zoom? Yeah. Well, it hit me. I, well, at first I was like, look, we need to hang out. We need to hang out and do that. I like doing them in person. You know, it's just a different vibe. No, I'm with you. Yeah. And now it's like you said, you're like, I don't know when this is going to end. I better step my Zoom game up. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I think that's all of us. Like, 
we're, we're kind of, you know, I've, you know, I, uh, it's, it's been some wild times for sure. Well, if they're, if they're interested in the music, man, they want to know more about your social media that you don't like doing. Uh, how can they keep up with, uh, St. Paul, go to St. Your website, social media, what do you got for them? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the normal stuff you have, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, whatever. I don't know. Go there. Yeah. Woo. Need you to, need to get, you need to, you know, we have need to go. I have people for that. That's what the Lex level you need to get to is you have a social so media guy. We've tried that. We really have. We've tried like, and, um, it just, <laughs> you know, it, I don't know. It's, it's fine. I have every, but the, to be fair, because I, you know, the guys know this, um, and everybody in our organization knows this. I have given the password to our Instagram and all of our social media to every member in our band. Every that's member. That's a lot of people. And I am, that's a lot of people. And I am still the only one that <laughs> posts on that. So I just want to like, <laughs> that's how good we are. It's, you know, and then, you know, I was like, I tried it. I, I try to do Twitter and, you know, and, but that, I mean, Twitter to me is like a scary place. It's like, man, it is like, whew. It's, now, you're walking you know, into a bar I mean? fight like Instagram is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm, <laughs> I just don't have the energy. I don't have the self-esteem for this. <laughs> you know, like I just, <laughs> I don't. There's only so many times that, you know, you can, you can be insulted and, and you know, it's just, I don't know. It's it's uh yeah I I'm trying I'm trying I've gotten better I've gone in phases, um I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> All right, brother, we are looking forward to it, man, and uh, look forward to when we can actually hang out in person. Uh, and appreciate you coming. Let's on, let's man. hope that's sooner than later. Yeah, thank hey, thank that. you A always anytime. As I say to end every episode, we better stop before we get embarrassed. I don't think we embarrassed ourselves this time. You're all right with that. Uh, but I do also tell everybody, adios, pichachos. Adios, pichachos. <laughs>